I've never seen that. So the shop, the shop didn't sell it, so they just want to shop it. You got in there, Wayne, yeah? Yeah, I've bought it as old stock, sort of thing. We've got a good year out of it. Well, guys, I'm out on a boat. You said, would I go on a, a boat? I'm going on a Wilson fly. It's Wayne's Thresher. There he goes. He's pulling the uh, pulling the boat up there. Pulling the boat up. Graham, what time did you get up this morning? Pulling the trader up. Uh, got it on a, on a winch up there at the ECA, Eastie Cruising Association. Hold on to the boat, Graham. He's getting carried away, all this talking. So, as you can see, it's, it's not dissimilar to when we used to go sharking. <laughs> There's barely enough room to stand. Wayne's well, got three tanks in there just to be just to be sure he's been got a bit of bait. A bit of bait, he's got a load of bait there. Sand eels and everything. Looks like a bit of chum there. Alright, let's spin this boat. Oh, I should spin it like this. Wayne told me to do that. He told me to do it, he told me. <laughs> so there you go, keep an eye out for Thresher now. That could be the boat to follow. So Wayne has got a, a little YouTube channel he's starting. You can get a, I think he has some big Pollock on a wreck out there, have a look at that one. I'm gonna pull this back in a little bit closer. So we're going to go out basically have a go for anything. Wayne will tell us where we're going. I can't think it's been two years since I've been down here. Terrible really. But it'd be nice just to get out on the boat. We've got an ebb tide by the feel of the pull on this. Right, we'll get back to you when we get aboard, get Wayne aboard. And uh, breezy. It's going to be a westerly wind, I think Wayne said, so we'll probably tuck in somewhere and look, we're going to catch anything. So Wayne runs a Suzuki, 70 horse on the back of his, and uh, it's got a nice big prop. I don't know if it's an extra large prop or not, I really don't know. But it's, it moves the boat along pretty quickly, faster than my 60 does, obviously, with the IC Drifter. We've got enough tackle and rubbish in there to fill a tackle shop. He launches from the ECA which has a lovely big wide concrete slip and they can actually do double boat launches there and double boat retrieves because they've got two winches. So a handy place that goes straight down into Langston Harbour. So you can go out from Langston, you know you can fish in the harbour, there's some good light tackle small fishing in there as well. Um, running out past that sort of jetty, some guys uh, off that pier bit, they, they do shore fish off that I believe. Possibly when the mackerel are in, it might be a good place to fish for mackerel. But um, it wasn't the greatest weather by the sky. It was a bit choppy that day. We know where Wayne went the previous day. Yes, he's been place fishing, hasn't he? You can tell that by all the bling on those beads, which look like some form of spreader bar system. But we're going to give it a go out there. First fish up for me. Out off the Isle of Wight there. Trying to get a bit of shelter off the wind. Very angry looking clouds there. As you can see, it's pretty breezy and a little bit of a choppy day. First fish up for me was a dogfish. Why is it me that I always have to get the dogfish trophy? Boat or shore, uh, almost especially shore. But listen, you've got to accept what's out there. When you drop your bait down sea fishing, you really don't know what you're going to get. And that's why I love it. The unexpected. So it's bait straight back down to see what we could catch. Get the rare sunshine now because it looks like Wayne's got one hooked up here as well. The tide just started to creep on the flood, I think. It doesn't feel like a big ray, but it does feel like a ray. I'd like it to be a turbot. <laughs> we just. But um, it's just coming up too easy now, so I don't really know what's happening. He's coming up a bit vertical for a doggy, though, isn't he? Well, it pulled much harder than a dog should pull. So I don't really know. Now it's moving a little bit. So maybe it's a... No, it's right. It's a ray, you called it, yeah. Yeah. It's a fun, funny fight, that. That's swam up. It looks like a carbon copy of the one you had earlier. There's another small fair. ride, yeah? Yeah. Even in size. Here we go. Let's have a look. Come on, up. Come on, welcome. Up. There we go. 
There we go, it's slightly smaller than the one you had. I mean, look at, the, look at these little chinu hooks, right? Now, I these, love these. These are the sharp ones you like, aren't they? Oh, I've, I've just thought, I think they're fabulous little hooks. They're strong and they're just really, really nice little hooks. Let me get it out of him quick. What did you, you call that one, Wayne? Uh, chinu. The pattern is a, is, is a chin, uh, what, what I know of as a chinu. And um, we sell them at Cosham Anglin. They, uh, they're different, you know, different brands of them, but they're just small, strong, sharp. They stay sharp all day. And as you've just seen now, I, I tend to use them more for um, the, the likes of uh, small fish, or yeah, bream and, and triggers and what have you. But if you're looking at something, well, I had a 25 pound stinger on one uh, last year. But uh, we show. Yeah, there we go. You see them, they use them to walk on the bottom sometimes. Anyway, little small eye, away he goes. That's the second bite, two bites, two fish, we'll, we'll take it. I don't really feel I want to take this, because... <laughs> you think it's a dog? Oh, it's the dreaded dog, I know it. I know it. There he is, come on you. Oh, probably not even hooked. I'd suggest he's just clamping on the bait anyway. I think he might be, you know. If he is, he's hardly hooked. Sometimes you think, how long could you hang there before you want to let go? And the answer is surprisingly a long time. And they can let go at any time. I think this one might be just hooked. Just nicked. Well, if he was, it was literally just. But you sometimes think, how long do you want to stay there hanging on to that? And the answer's quite a long time. Rag roaming that one, way? Um, I can't remember now. I don't think it is, no. I think I'll put a little sliver of um, sand here and I'll, I'll, it's, it's a dog again. I think once um, you open that dog pound, this time of year they are thick on the ground. Oh, I don't know, put a sl well, funny enough, <laughs> it's about the only time of year they pull back. I think they might be in breeding mode and they got a little bit more uh, extra energy. See, that actually gave a good bite and Gave a couple of good tugs back. Fairly sizable dog. Not a small one, but even so. They look like sandals, though, don't they? They do like them. They like fish baits, yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, so do rays and so do a lot of other, other things you might be targeting, but um, it's not what I want. And again, as I say, look at that little tiny chin hook. Lovely. Lovely thing. Strong. That'll still be sharp. Yeah. Look, still, yeah. still nice and sharp. Lovely. Good hooks. Mm, felt like an all right ray at first, now it's coming quite easily. Nah, that's a dog. Is it a doggy? Yeah, I'll do that. Call me up a line, that's what I thought. Well, well, well. Uh, there you go. How is that? There are there is old ones from last year that he, he won't use. Um, so he's donated them to me, but I'll, I'm not proud, I'll use them. Yeah. <laughs> and now Wayne's in again. Yeah, a little lively small eyed ray, very small. Um, getting, well, a lot bigger in the area, but he's the first um, fish other than a dog that's come aboard, so I'll happily uh, I'll take him. Step in the right you? direction. Exactly, exactly. Well, yeah, it's been hard for everybody, though, that's the problem. Uh, a couple of boats over around the corner have just moved. They said the water's chocolate and they've barely had a bite. It looks flat here because we're in the lee of the wind. That's why we've come here. Um, and this fish obviously means I'm going to give it a bit longer. We were going to shoot off, but we'll, we'll stay a bit longer. See what comes up. Oh, it's banging. I think it's a doggy. Oh, yeah, it dog. It was a doggy okay. sort of bang. Ooh. Yeah, doggo, I think. Going to the dogs, kicking and twanging. Well, if they're not eating that fresh launch, which they're not, so well the uh, tide was just starting to ease on, ease on that rip you can tell by the waves at the background um, it enabled the old dogfish to find our baits even faster um, they're entertaining to catch after a while too many and it just gets a bit samey but it was on small hooks and it came off easily So we've had a move, we're coming a little bit further out. 
Well, he's got good fish. I haven't been here long, have we, Wayne? Well, we've had bites from the very first drop. I lost something on the loiter rod. It's like a section of the uh, launch. There's a bite on there now. Is that a bite up there on that? It could be. Little tap. It could be. This one's connected to it, or it's a different fish. This feels like an eel all day long. Love to be proven wrong. <laughs> Won't hear me say that often. But no, and what was it? What was bait we on here? Sandal again? This was a, a chunk of that launch you caught earlier. Nice fresh bit of launch, which it was only because it was already ready to go out. I didn't really want to put a bit of fish bait down here. I wanted to go squid. What I really like this find here is some um, some bream. But um, we're just off of a reef. We've got another one there, Wayne. It's not, it's not wrapped up, is it? Really? It might be. It is what we thought it was. I yeah, think yeah. actually, I've definitely got some lines here, look. So I might even have both of the other lines. But that's what these eels do, they're just an absolute pain. But we're near a reef and... Well, you've got to expect, isn't it? If you don't expect to pick up eels near reefs, then... Um, you don't really know what you expect to pick up, but there should, there should. I'd like to think there's the possibility of... Patrol. You see there, even on small hooks, those, a small conger can still spin and twist, uh, you know, making it difficult, tangling the lines and stuff like that, but you can normally get them off with a T-bar. I've got half a sardine on, but sardines are really soft bait, so I've got a bit of a tap going on here at the moment. I don't know if it's a kitchen tap or a bath tap, but it is a tap. Hopefully it comes. The trouble is with sardines, I think they can chew them off. He's still on, he's kicking, I don't know what it's probably a bloody dogfish cast miles back, that's all that is I reckon we. But I'll take it. Over the rail and in the pail. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't watched that for a long time. I still watch it, it's very it's samey, it's the same format for the last eight years and, yeah. and I still watch it because <laughs> it's fishing. Mind you, that woman I think is on there because a couple of years ago she pulled an enormous tuna on her own over the over the side of the boat. Oh my god, it was massive and all. So she deserved the accolade. That was, uh, that was an impressive achievement. Yeah, it's a small. Oh, small little small look. Normally a one-way ticket. Mm. I did worry about this being the outcome here. You think there'd be bream where there's congas, so wouldn't you? You know, you think there's. If it's reef, even the slightest hint of rough. I think the ground's got to be right from this time of year. They're looking for certain type of ground. If it ain't quite right, then there might be the, the non-breeding fish that are here to feed. And there he is, a little strap here. They could have done a lot of damage to my other lines. I've got two he's on. gone, he's lucky. He just, I don't know if he opened up or not. That's all I had on there, folks, was that piece of squid tentacle. I don't, I want to say I've not seen them working with us before. No, they're my luxury ones. They're my, sorry? My luxury ones. This is Richard the Plaster's reel he gave me, as well as his pike lures. I really like that one, I don't know, it's a pen, whatever, I can't even read it. High speed, 8.1, I, like, I really like it, it's smooth. That's the original line on it, it's been over 23 years, but it's still, it's still doable. I like it. And this rod is a... I can't read them. I don't even know. I don't know what it doesn't say on it. A master, master long control salt water... I don't know, it's not even a make on that. I thought it was like a Namur. I don't even know where it came from. Do you get, what, give me a pair of them or is it just rod and the other one? No, no, they're different. They, that one was glued. I think they were in the mirrors. I think one might be Mike's, oh, right. which is now mine, because <laughs> I caught fish on it. And uh, this one I think we broke and I glued together permanently. It was a two-piece. Yeah, but they're, they're quite pokey, you know, they, that's why, like you use those. Well, Graham, yeah. I've got to ask you, mate, what, what has happened to your hat? Because um, if you've been struck by lightning. <laughs> oh, the black carbon. Yeah. <laughs> No, I got fed up with people saying, well, you're sponsored by somebody, mate. You're sponsored by whoever this... I said, somebody gave me a hat. 
The silly was I've got a hat. So what I've done is the sponsorship has been painted out with black paint. <laughs> I just put black paint. Here he said, you've just ruined that. I said, I oh, know, but I'm not sponsored by anybody. Now, sponsor to me, might be to you, Wayne. Sponsored, if somebody wants to give 20 grand to me and Wayne to talk about their tackle, I'm sure we can arrange to talk about their tackle. Well, yeah, there's, um, you know, I think money talks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We all get our limit. But, Prin uh, principles don't pay the bills. No, that's very true. That is very true. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I painted all that out. I thought I'd get fed up. People saying, oh, you're sponsored by beep. I said, no, 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 sponsorship's money, not a free hat. Somebody gave me a free hat. A guy gave me two loaves of bread. One was sponsored by the bakery because he gave me two loaves of bread. Use some bake ground. Have some rag ground left over. Well, I'm not sponsored by Pete Kilshaw, but they give me them sad deals, and I'm going to mention They're sponsored. It. sponsored. <laughs> Those are good, because I have just caught on Pete's sandals. <laughs> they are good sandals. I cannot recommend them enough. They were free from good Pete. Good old Pete, who's drawn himself <laughs> another load of new fresh heels, so he gave me all these old ones. They're still catching. They're still working. There you go. So the mark we were on, just tell a bit about the mark, we sort of ground we're over, way. Right, yeah. Um... Well, it's a well-known mark called the Princessa. Um, normally, I would fish it from the other side on a flood tide. Can't really fish it at anchor on too big a tides because it, it can rip through here. And if you're fishing for things like bream, you're not going to be using a pound and a half of lead, are you? So I thought I'd come here on a, on a smaller tide only because we were going to go and sand down bay, but it's, the water's stuck chocolate in there. So we've nipped out and we're fishing it on the ebb. And we have bites since we've got here but there have only been dogs and strap hills so far um i feel another move coming it's just one of those days there's a lot of boats just turn that radio off a second yeah i feel there's a lot of boats moving and it tells a story in itself and that is um i spoke to a few on the you know on the radio and all moving around aren't they? Right? yeah they're all saying i mean my, my friend earlier spent probably about two hours in uh Sandown Bay there, he's a good angler, he knows what he's doing, he had one bite. Um, we didn't fare that much better out there, we had dogs and a, and a small, uh, small eyed ray. Um, and some days are like that, I mean you could be in a different area and it could be kicking off, and even a different spot and it could be kicking off, but often, you can see it's really flattened off nicely. Yeah, it's nice, it's choppy this morning, wasn't it, wind a bit iffy. The forecast is better than they said, which is annoying because you, you know, I would have gone all the way up to, uh, towards Kingmere today. Um, or even possibly around the back of the island because there's only a very very small tide. But there you go, that's fishing. You you you, you know you live and die by your decisions, and uh, sometimes they pay dividends, sometimes they don't. So you figure another little move somewhere else, Wayne? I think so. I think uh, we, yeah, we're getting plenty of bites here, but they they all feel a bit samey. We'll get near the end of the day. This might be me for the day, Wayne. Well, that's a nice not. bend. And that rod, lovely. It's been one of those tough days you get them when you're fishing. It don't really matter who you are, where you are. There's just days where it's slow. And this was our third and final move of the day. And the end of the day, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the end. And I thought to myself, well, I know there's a little bank here. And um, it's one you can fish as the tide swings. So as it goes round, you can actually... Uh, you can fish, but like, as the tide, there's very few but rough ground. You're wasting your time; it just gets snagged up. So, Graham's actually um, used a new hook. <laughs> yeah, we should have filmed. Another packet. I never realised it was silver. <laughs> I always thought they were brown. It, he's not even joking. What is that? Type, yeah? it looks like a small eye. Small eye, I think. There we go. A little bit tangled up, but we'll oh, take him. Good. We'll take him. We won't take him. Take him, but you know what I mean. Well. Yeah, that's a nice one. Here we go. Well, happy with that, guys. Yeah, as Wayne said, it's one of those days. They can't all be massive fish days, you know. I've always wondered myself how hard they can crash. These crushers, so I can't quite get the finger, but I'm awfully close to the crushers. You'll you'll never forget how close how hard they can clamp down on your finger once it's been done to you, that's that's for certain. Yeah, it's Blyer's job. I've got the tea bar here if you'd like that. Yeah, it's well, it'd be a nice easy one now, because I'm, you see how close you are, it's tempting, isn't it? Of course it is. There we go, lovely job. Well, 
Thanks to Wayne bringing me out here, my first trip with Wayne for, I don't know, a long time. Half. Yeah, got to be 18 months, yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to be a long time, yeah. Long overdue, well, at least we've caught a couple of fish. Yeah, some bit, let's head back. There you go. Upside down, there you go. Right, right up. Perfect. Oh, yeah, well, that. that was a funny old bite, wasn't it? You did say there was a bite on that, and I said no, but if it was. Well, there you go, back at the ECA, back onto the trailer with the Wilson Flyer. And uh, weather's broken up, you can see the weather's broken. Why couldn't it start like that in the morning? I mean, it's really annoying when it's choppy and pitchy in the morning and it turns up like that. So Wayne's getting the boat wound up on the trailer, straight back up the slip, away it goes, drag it up. Well, I'm up at uh, Mike's Woodland. He asked me to come up. He's down doing a, a film further down with, with uh, Ben. Um, they're doing a, a, a charcoal big kiln film about that. And you can watch that, hopefully, if they get it all done on TA Outdoors. But he asked me to pop up here. And I had a sort of a day in between accounts and work and stuff. And I had to just sort the gas engineer for his checks out. So left him all the keys. I thought, Do you know what? I will go. I was so pleased I did because this is, as you've seen his woodland before, it's now filled out with the beech trees and it looks really nice. I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen a deer or anything, but if you look up there, a complete canopy up there of beech. And he's got some ash and he's got oak in here. He's done a lot of planting. I want to see what's happened there um, through here. If you haven't been across to Mike's channel, it's worth going across for a bit of what he calls R&R, &R, rest and relaxation, and see what uh, we've been doing here. I've not been up here for a few months, I've got to be honest. See, now this is on his channel. It shows his work. He, he builds these to protect the hazel for coppicing here in the middle to stop the deer getting it. And it obviously does work because it's kept the deer from chewing it all. He needs a good old rake and tidy up here. And what I've done, as you can see, I do it anyway, is put my socks, uh, trousers inside my socks, because they do get ticks here from the deer, and his area is known for ticks. Pat, uh, Jackson's had them. Also, um, he can carry the tick Lyme's disease, but we don't need that. He's got a really good stock of dried ash. These are all from the dead one. We haven't cut that down. That's all come from this one that was just a natural storm blow over the immense one. Pizza oven still here. He's got a load of wood dry in there. Wood dry in here. For me, I have to say, woodlands like this are nice in the autumn and winter. That's what I think they are, nice in the autumn and winter. I'm going to have a walk around the other side. The bluebells have all gone here. You can see they've all sort of gone to seed, if that's what the term is. So quiet. These holes here, just so you know, can you see these big depressions there? There's one there, there's one over there. There's one here, I'll just walk down, you might be able to see it there. This one, this one especially. They were dug out for chalk, 
years ago. Who knows? 100, 200 years ago, I don't know, 100 years ago, so more than 100 years ago. That was all dug out for chalk there. So I think he's going to have a look in there, see what else. It's got a covering of clay there. But you can see they were utilised. And that's what these forests were years ago. They were actually um, utilised by the local farm labourers, I guess, who were coming here, cut the hazel for coppicing. The coppicing is like, say, making this type of fencing. This is where he dries. So we got to... God, I can't believe I couldn't do all this again, bringing all this hardcore up here. Made really good hard standing of it. Gates are still there. So he can actually pull his camper up here. And uh, he's got that for shelter as well. So let's come up into the main beach area. I can see what I consider... It's like a couple of blowdowns here from storms. And the big ones are still the same, but if you look here... This one I don't recognise. Not personally by name, I don't remember that one being over there. And you can see it's just, only just hanging there. That almost needs... This is what English woodland should be and used to look like years ago. This one's, I don't recognise, could be a new one. Probably through the winter you can see it's gone over. Bits of whatever flint used to be in there. In the amongst the clay. So again, if that's logged up, oh my goodness, that's enough logs for my log burner for a very long time. And ash, I think they call it the Queen's Wood when you burn it. Over there is a buzzard. I don't think that's a red cut, I think it's a buzzard. They've cut this field as well. And the one way, way in the distance, you can see the tractor marks on it. They haven't cut that one yet. So maybe that'd be corn, wheat, whatever. This one's probably gone for hay or silage or haylage. Loads and loads of butterflies all over that. I can't imagine what, there's no flowers there, so I don't know what they're doing, but you can see the sort of view you've got before, before, <laughs> before we get really busy on this island, as they say. So having not been up here for a while, you can see here um, the wild garlic, the last of the wild garlic. In fact, you break it up and you crush it and you can actually smell the wild garlic. I'm not sure whether they cook with it at this stage or whether they do it in the spring. But during the uh, spring, I've missed it this year, but I've, I'm going to put some footage up. And this is absolutely stunning. This, and Mike's got about the biggest uh, wild garlic patch in a whole woodland, I think. Just on the corner up from his um, ash cabin, I would call it. Ash is toned down. If you look on his site again where we built all this, had it all milled. It's actually aged, as it were, really, really well. No bears and wolverines around here sleeping, hopefully. No. He said, that's the best thing that we, we, we conservatively saying, me and mum bought up and rolled all the way up here. And it is, has worked easily fills up what we're going to do is try and run a second one off it i guess cap in here and do a second one so this can overflow into that because the benefit being my guttering's worked up there push it straight and he said it's been uh, really beneficial for the new plants he's planted as part of his sort of forestry management because in this dry spell He's really stuffed with water. Well, here, he gets a watering can and lugs it all the way down to where he's put the new shoots in. I just thought it'd be interesting to show you guys. I'm probably going to come up and do an overnighter up here. He's built this. I haven't seen this before. This is new. The seating. Dad's fireplace. That is some weird-looking fireplace, but it works really well. Um, so we'll have a cook up here. Maybe I'll do a double overnighter with him.
doing this, you won't see it till I take it outside. It certainly looks like, we used to call it a switch years ago, but it's obviously a broom. And you'd be surprised, they're really, really effective. That looks like it was made by Ben, I reckon. Yeah, there's another, I guess, look, you see a spearhead here. See, the thing is, if you did an overnighter here when you're doing the forestry work and moving around doing jobs, you got the chance of late evening or dawn of getting up early and using these two windows to film from to see what else is out on the woodland in the low light levels. I sort of look forward to that part. It's a bit like fishing, you're sort of out there hunting but you're with a camera. So over here is where Mike did uh, a film on the sort of reinstatement of traditional fence edges. And I haven't seen this. It's almost worth going back over his films. When he cut this and laid it down here, look how far the shoots have come up vertically. Look, absolutely ridiculous. So the old school way of making a hedge like that works. Every one of these is shooting up there and I did have a drive around in the winter and I got some footage actually of uh, really really done professionally um, the, the, the edging like this and uh, when I went there to film it probably no more than a few weeks ago I thought I'll go and film that and see what that looks like it's just a complete hedge I can't film anything it's just a, it's just a jungle of vegetation probably no more than a few weeks ago I thought I'll go and film that and see what that looks like it's just a complete hedge, I can't film anything, it's just a, it's just a jungle of vegetation. So it shows you, you know, that it does actually work. You can see it through here. So it's now growing vertically from the ones he's cut and folded over. And he's got some new plants here, <clears throat> trees he put in. It's part, part of his uh, planting program. And normally I can't see where they are, he's normally got these Plastic covers around. Oh, I see them down the end. See, he's got them in here. He's planted these growing. They do look like they need some water absolutely badly. In these drought conditions, this is all falling out. As you can see. So they need watering. Of course, in the wild, they don't get that luxury. And these are to keep the deer from chewing all the leaves off. See most of the uh, update on my space. Let's go and see how they're getting on with this charcoal a unit that uh, Ben's building and Mike's filming. Oh, here's the enemy. It looks like moles. My arch enemy. Wait till you see how I tried to get rid of them. <laughs> Man, historically dangerous. I have to put the film up soon. I get arrested afterwards, I suspect, but still, it's a bit of fun. So Ben and Mike are filling up, I'm going to call it a kiln here, it's a proper charcoal kiln. Mike's going to have the full story of this on his show TA Outdoors, so look that one up. It's got vents and funnels and it looks like a sort of Sputnik that's just landed from space. But I think basically put a, a bit of charcoal from a previous bird inside to start it, fill this all up with his super dried leftover dead ash and stuff like that you can see that look he's been drying it for god knows for how long a year or more fills it up lights it puts a lid on and it burns away for uh, several hours eight hours is it um got clay around the edge so it's not gonna spread you know into the forest or anything like that it's all done properly the main thing is we just don't need it raining so he's got a huge store um of ash i believe cut down over there um, from dead stuff, logged up into that size to go in there. And it's got a really good site, look. Wood store, got the wood store here. Giant tarp here for the sort of main base camp area. More wood all off the ground, you'll notice. Got to be off the ground or it's going to rot. Same as sort of Mike's got up the end, keep it uh, all stacked and super dry. It's no different to me using it for the log burn, even for an open fire. It's got all that there and a great space here look for a cook up nice hanging one with a historic kettle there I like that kettle seating 
access to chopping wood, not a million miles from the fire, all convenient and really cool. It, it, you know, Ben's done all this on his own. Look, he's built the entire thing on his own. A yurt here, and he's and he's made a a, a machine. I don't know what the name of it is, but you pedal it up and down like this, and it rolls, and it makes a lathe of it. There, I'm going to call it. There might be a proper name to it. I guess that can be adjusted here. It's all beyond me. A lot of work. It looks like Ben. I think he's a carpenter by trade. Has made all of this, all of it. But I do like that up there with the, with the light. Got the dunny over there. All done with ash that he split itself and put down uh, the shingles for the roof in. And it's all grown up here amazingly. So this apparently, I'm talking to him just now, does have, let's say, canvas comes down, door goes there. So it's all part of the woodland and forestry work what he did say was over here they're going to be a while loading all that uh, if they're doing that heavy wheelbarrow work i've done more than my share on mate so i think you know what i think i keep away from the wheelbarrow i've done enough of that laboring but ben was saying about these fox gloves since it's been cleared you know all the dead since all the dead stuff and the rubbish has been cleared you can see look there's the hole can you see the hole in the, up there where dead stuff's come down big gap and last you didn't get it, we've got loads and loads of foxgloves here that have come up. And you can see the height of them, that they stretched. Now, we didn't have those last year. So those plants or seeds or whatever have been in the ground, like, who knows how long. But they've only come up in the area that you got the clear light from. And, of course, it's all good for bees, bumblebees and stuff like these. They're everywhere, look. More log stores. I think that's for making brooms or something, I don't know. But up inside there, very, very sort of delicate looking. And you can see, I would have thought they grew at the bottom and then flowered up, but you can look here, I guess they flower at the top and did they pop down or have these already flowered? I'm gonna say these have already flowered. That's gonna be, say, the seed for next year. And here, look, because of the drop-offs on the floor, these have dropped off from there. So this will be getting to the last of the growth of the foxgloves. That would be my theory. Anybody out there, tell us about those. Well, this is something anybody out here should be thinking of, and I haven't. Jungle formula there. Keep those mozzies and bugs at bay. Mind you, I think a lot of you have commented that I've always said there's less insects around. Definitely there's less insects on my plants, hoverflies, honey bees and all that. Yeah, there's less insects around. And people have been saying, do you know what, Graham, you're right, because the cars aren't splattering insects over here. So if you're abroad, if you're in a foreign country, are you finding more insects or less insects? Let us know. Answers on a postcard. No. I want to know what this is. That is a strange looking implement. That's for holding, for the heat to go. And that's for, I was going to say, lifting the kettle off. Something like that. That's my take on it. I don't know what the T-bar at the top's for though. That's definitely for heat dissipation, so the heat would travel from up there, but we'll have to ask Ben, who's extremely knowledgeable on all things outdoorsy. Look at this, there's an old school toolbox. And what is this one? Price's Chef's Candle. Gets rid of odour, so that's probably the same as the modern anti mozzie stuff you can buy. I made these as well. I know the ladies will like this. You'll like these ladies. Look at these. How cool are these made out of discs of wood? Like a little flower. Very clever. I dare say they do them in the uh, garden centres, but doing one yourself is a whole different thing.
Oh, look at all three chimneys going now. That's exactly it. Well, we were smoking for a while, yeah. actually. Yeah, we, at the lid it was. At the we, lid, sorry. The lid, the lid will drop down in a minute. It'll be nice. It'll all come out of the chimney. Just something different. Right, Ben's gone back to his van to get some more tools. What I did notice was this. I did think, I thought, what are they for? I thought, yeah, they're clever, though. a stake that's been broken. That's what I thought, but it's not. It's to, what do you call them? Is, is there a name to it, them? I don't know what the name is, but it, it just means that every time it rains, it runs straight off and it never sits on the tarp. So, so it constantly has the lowest point there. Because normally you, a tarp would be up here and the rain up, would start belly, sagging yeah. there. But because there's here, it's going to take the quickest route, which is straight off the top, because the weight's there pulling it down. So really, there's so no reason puddles. why you couldn't have a bucket there and a rope. And, and yeah, yeah, fill the bucket with Or water. a piece of hazel to make, you know, to fill some water up for plants or put, whatever. Put water in the trees, newly yeah. planted trees or something like that, yeah. Yeah, so it's just a water-saving device. Yeah, it's quite clever. Yeah, it's simple, clever. but really... So basic, you know, yeah. you think, ah, oh, that's... A, Good idea. We were saying the A-frame to the tarp is a good idea as well on that. Really good. Yeah. You know, just the fact it gives you... you got headroom. I you mean, this is a, it's not a living place, it's a no, workplace. It's just a workshop. But your yeah. one, you've got a pole in the middle, which has got a special pleasure. With it, but an A-frame will give you a lot more space yeah, so you don't bang into the pole in the middle all the time. And it's over a wooden frame, the tarp, so it's got support. It's not just a loose flying tarp like the one I've got over there. And yours has been up there a year and... Two years now. Yeah, That's two years. Two years, two and a half years. It's done well, that top. There's a creature. There. Yeah, what's that? That's that a looked like a horse right yeah. there. That's a nasty one. He's there, know. he's there. Is he still there? He just flew up. He just flew up. Experts tell us. It's definitely a horse There's bite. nothing like getting a bite. They don't sting, they bite. A horse fly bite. You know when you've been bitten by one. <laughs> Apparently, with a horse fly bite, you're meant to not touch them. Because your natural reaction is to yeah. swat them off. Yeah. You're meant to leave them. Oh, nice. them, no, you're meant to let them, oh, this is what I've heard, you're meant to leave them, let them do their thing, let <laughs> let them fly off, yeah. and you don't have anywhere near as much of the pay, after pain with the bite. This oh, is really? what I've heard, a lot of people have said it, I've heard it a couple of times from people, let them bite you, I know it's hard to let yeah, something yeah, bite yeah. you, but let it do its thing and let it fly off, and then you don't get that big raised bump, yeah. and the, the side kind of itchiness after it. But it's instinct to try and It's instinct it. to go, ow, whack, <laughs> just yeah, hit it, yeah. but apparently that's the worst one. Let's see if we can spot him again because I don't want to take that test and I can assure yeah. you he won't be sitting on me letting him eat me or bite me. They're over there watching smoke. The guys are watching smoke. I'm looking around and uh, he's got a dead one here, big dead tree, and there's one, two, three massive bracket funguses on there. So I'll let you have a look at these. The size of these bracket funguses, are they what they start like? So they start down there. Now this is my hand to give you a guide. The size of it, once you get up, Further and further up the tree. Big one. Another big one there.
had a good look around. Might finish the filming off over there, the charcoal burning with Ben. And uh, yeah, really nice camp he's got here. I'll show you, smoke's coming up all three chimneys now. So I just thought I'd give you guys an update of what's going on in the woodland. We change the chimneys at one. Yeah. So maybe another 25 minutes or 20 minutes and swap them over. Well, isn't it enjoyable just to see two grown men sitting back in the woods enjoying some smoke? You know what I mean? It is charcoal smoke. Apparently it turned out really well. Now if you want to see what it turned out like, I purposely didn't film it because the film's just been put up by Mike and it's on TA Outdoors. And it apparently, I spoke to him just before I edited this film, it turned out really well this charcoal. So fair play to Ben for getting it right first time. So people, thanks for watching this one. A little bit of fun, a little bit of a mix up. It's probably only me that's doing this sort of mixed up stuff and different stuff trying to keep everybody entertained. I can't just keep chasing the algorithm, it's just so boring. I want to do what I want to do. Hope you guys appreciate it. We'll see you in the next show.